Ever wondered why a city looks the way it does on a map? Take Ottawa, Canada's capital for example. Originally a lumber town, it went through big changes in its layout over the years. And today, I want to explore one of the key plans that shaped the city, the Grebaia Plan. Back in 1857, Ottawa became the capital of a united Canada, and it grew even more after Confederation in 1867. The city's first planning move, you could say, happened in 1859, when Parliament Hill became the government center with the iconic Peace Tower setting the skyline limit at 150 feet. But how did the city evolve from its lumber town origins to the structured capital we see today? Let's find out. As Ottawa evolved into the capital, it sprawled along the southern shore of Ottawa River. Growth skyrocketed causing urban sprawl, especially with the rise of cars in the 1920s. Enter Prime Minister Mackenzie King, who recruited the visionary French architect Jacques Rebaire to craft a master plan for the national capital region. Krebaille's plan aimed for more than just city structure. Picture this, workers living in thoughtfully planned neighborhoods near their jobs, minus the downtown chaos and traffic. To tackle urban sprawl, he proposed a genius solution, a green belt, encircling Ottawa. Krebaille envisioned a city within the belt, accommodating around 600,000 people, with satellite cities outside, creating a denser and more organized urban landscape. Not stopping at the green belt, Krebaille had more tricks up his sleeve, to ease downtown congestion in Ottawa. You see, imagine the city's row network before, a tangled mess. Now. Envision his proposed roadway system, a well-connected web spanning the entire metropolitan area. Between 1950 and 1970, major changes unfolded. Crosstown railway lines disappeared, and a new passenger station emerged strategically placed three kilometers from downtown. Following Grabaya's advice, streetcars and their tract also vanished from the city streets by 1959. As the city shifted from rails to wheels, impressive roads and scenic parkways popped up along former railway path. Picture the Rockcliffe Parkway, Ottawa River Parkway, and Colonel By Drive weaving through the landscape. A groundbreaking addition was the Queensway, a new freeway transforming an old railway line. But that's not all. The federal government embraced Krebaille's idea of office decentralization. Between 1957 and 1968, they constructed several office complexes throughout the Ottawa Gatineau area. But in a dramatic turn of event, the city officials and the federal government woke up to a harsh reality. The Green Belt, envisioned as the savior against urban sprawl, began to crumble even before its completion. Fierce battles with independent satellite cities over Green Belt use resulted in housing cropping up on its outer edges, defying its intended purpose. While Grebai succeeded in implementing the Green Belt and relocating train lines, his victories were accompanied with resounding failures. His grand vision of a massive war memorial in Gatineau got shelved due to opposition from veterans, adamant about about honoring World War II heroes at the National War Memorial in downtown Ottawa. Many monumental buildings slated for the downtown core were never erected, while others found a home elsewhere. Krebaille's attempt to safeguard Parliament Hill's view from the south through height restriction also failed with towering office buildings for federal civil servants obstructing the view. And the ambitious plan to revive the Le Breton flats took over a generation to kick off, thanks to shifting government priorities and sluggish progress. Even 50 years after demolishing the blind neighborhood, it stands as a testament to a prolonged work in progress, grappling with the echoes of past challenges. Reflecting on the past, Krebaille's strong preference for cars over trains and trams turned out to be a regrettable choice. His miscalculations on the future population of the national capital region proved devastating. Expecting 500,000 to 600,000 residents by 2020, the reality stands at a staggering 1.4 million. The consequences unfolded as roads, especially the divisive Queensway, mirrored the disruptive impact of railways, tearing through neighborhoods. Kabai's vision of a picturesque tree-lined boulevard remained unfulfilled and the absence of two crucial bridges over the Ottawa River forced interprovincial traffic through downtown, intensifying the very traffic issues Krebaille sought to prevent. The Green Belt, meant to curb urban sprawl, faltered in the face of the automobile's dominance. Instead of achieving its purpose, satellite communities transformed into mere bedroom extensions for Ottawa, exacerbating the traffic problems Krebaille desperately aimed to evade. And while I highlight the shortcomings of the Krebaille plan, it's essential to acknowledge that Ottawa owes its current identity to him and his vision. Despite the plan's imperfections, the city, with a blend of historical charm and forward-thinking architecture, stands as a testament to Krebaille's 
influence. From this gritty industrial past, Ottawa has transformed into a beautiful, albeit quiet city. The plan may have overlooked transit, but there's a bright resurgence on the horizon with the construction of the LRT system and an existing bus network. Though they do currently need a lot of attention, there's tremendous potential for these systems to evolve into sources of pride for citizens. Envisioning an interprovincial connection, the LRT could stretch across the river, facilitating smoother commuting. In acknowledging that Ottawa still has work ahead, it's worth exploring its urban history to grasp the city's present state. There's optimism that improvement lies ahead, and if you've enjoyed this video, well, show some love by liking and subscribing. Feel free to suggest which maps I should explore next, and I'll see you on the next one.